Good morning children. Today I am back with the explanation of another poem from our English Marigold textbook for Standard 4. The name of the poem is A Watering Rhyme and it has been written by P. A. Rhodes. So let's get started. Children, we all know that when we water the plants, it's the roots that first absorb the water. And from the roots, the water travels to the stem and to the different parts of the plant. So the movement of the water is upwards, starting from the roots to the different parts of the plant. plant is watered in the right manner, then the plant grows to its fullest, giving us fruits and flowers. So this is what the poet tries to tell us through this poem, where he tells us the best time and the best place to water the plants. So let's look at the poem in detail. First of all, let's recite the poem, A Watering Rhyme. Early in the morning or the evening hour are the times to water every kind of flower. Watering at noonday when the sun is high doesn't help the flowers only makes them die. Also, when you water, water at the roots. Flowers keep their mouths where we should wear our boots. Soak the earth around them. Then through all the heat, the flowers will have water for their thirsty feet. Here is the entire poem. Now we shall be looking at the lines of this particular poem. A watering rhyme. Early in the morning or the evening hour are the times to water every kind of flower. The poet begins the poem by telling us a time when we should be watering the plants. He says that the best time to water the plants is early in the morning or the evening time. Watering at noonday when the sun is high doesn't help the flowers, only makes them die. In these lines, the poet says that the time when you should not be watering is a noonday, the middle of the day when the sun is shining very brightly in the sky. At this time, if you try to water the plants, it's not going to help the plants to grow. Rather, it's only going to make them die. So, after telling us when it's the best time to water the plants, the poet tells us that we should not be watering the plants at noonday. Also, when you water, water at the roots. Flowers keep their mouths where we should wear our boots. In these lines, the poet tells us the place where we should be watering the plants. He says that if you are watering, then do pour the water at the roots. Just as the way we wear our boots in our feet. So ground is a place where the flowers have the place to absorb the water. So root is the thing that takes in the water. So please water the plants at the roots, not over the plants, 
not at the flowers or at the leaves but what are the plants at the roots soak the earth around them then through all the heat the flowers will have water for their thirsty feed in these last lines the poet says that soak the water around the plants give sufficient water for the plants so that the flowers are not thirsty they get a ample amount of water which helps them to grow so in this poem the poet has informed us the time when we should be watering the plants and the place where we should water so that the plant grows well this poem teaches us a very valuable lesson trees and plants are very important parts of nature we require trees and plants for our survival and hence it's the duty of each of us to take care of these trees and plants so let us all plant one plant and make this environment green in this poem we come across new words such as rhyme watering noon day roots boots soak heat i hope you have paid attention to the pronunciation and the spellings of these words now let's look at the meanings of some of the difficult words r it means a period of time noon day it means the middle of the day boots footwear that covers the whole foot and lower leg soak it means to make something wet by dipping it watering to make something wet Now I'm going to show you some flowers which will help us to do the exercise in our textbook. Do pay attention to the, these flowers. Sweet pea, marigold, jasmine, lotus. Mogra Dahlia Flax Pansy Hibiscus Children we have just seen the names of some of the flowers now what we have to do is that we have to place the letters in the right order to form the names of flowers in the exercise given in our textbook so let's start doing it the first one is sweet pea next marigold next one jasmine then we have got lotus next mogra then dahlia the next one flax then pansy 
and the last one hibiscus now we shall be looking at the rhyming words in the poem r rhymes with flower hi rhymes with die roots rhyme with boots heat rhymes with feet now there is another exercise in our textbook wherein we have to write some more rhyming words so here we go hi sigh boots roots morning evening heat feet car far where care these are some of the rhyming words you may form your own set of rhyming words the next exercise requires us to form words that end with ing so some of the examples are sing plus ing singing dance plus ing dancing read plus ing reading play plus ing playing write plus ing writing these are just some of the examples you are free to write your own set of words in the next exercise we need to look for words in the poem which sound like the words given below r r there there flower flower where where sun sun through through now in these words children you'll find that the spellings and the meanings of these words are different but the pronunciation is the same for example w h e r e where it means where are you going whereas w e a r where means what are you wearing same way s o s sun he is the son of a doctor whereas s u n sun refers to the sun that is shining in the sky so in all these words you find that the meanings and the spellings are different but the pronunciation is the same whether it is a flower or through or are the meaning is different but the pronunciation is same so such words whose spellings and meanings are different but the pronunciation is same are known as homophones before we go ahead with the next exercise we need to know that when we write sentences we have to keep certain things in our mind we have to use certain things what are they first of all we need to begin every sentence with a capital letter when we are using proper nouns these proper nouns also begin with a capital letter the second one is comma we use comma when there is a pause in a sentence when we are breaking the se- breaking the sentence to mention certain common points we use a full stop when we reach the end of a sentence and we use a question mark when we are asking a question so all these things capital letters comma full stop question mark are important points to be noted when we punctuate the sentence in the next exercise we have some sentences 
where the capital letters, commas, full stops and question marks are missing. We have to put these in the correct places. So in the first sentence, on Monday, I will go to school. Here, O of on, M of Monday will be capital. After Monday, there will be a comma. The next word I, I refers to myself. I should be written in capital letter. And when the sentence ends, there will be a full stop. The second sentence, Rahim, Ravi and Raju are going to see the circus. Here, Rahim, Ravi and Raju are proper nouns. So these words should begin with a capital letter. And hence, R of Rahim, R of Ravi and R of Raju will be capital. Since we are talking of more than one person, there will be comma between Rahim and Ravi. And when the sentence ends, that is after circus, there should be a full stop. The third sentence, Sita, where are you looking? Here, S of Sita will be capital, followed by a comma. And since we are asking a question, there will be a question mark after looking. The next sentence, the tailor went to the market, Mr. Singh. So here the sentence will begin with capital T. After market, there is a comma and then M of Mr. and S of Singh should be capital as it is a proper noun followed by a full stop. The next sentence, every Sunday I go for a walk, have breakfast, read story books, listen to music and watch television. So as per the rule, the sentence will begin with a capital E. S of Sunday should be capital as it refers to the day of a week, followed by a comma. And then you find that there are various activities that is being performed. So after every activity, there should be a comma. So I go for a walk, comma, have breakfast, comma, read storybooks, comma, and at the end of the sentence, there should be a full stop. The next one, Lakshmi, why are you crying? The sentence will begin with a capital letter L. At the same time, Lakshmi is a proper noun followed by a comma and since it's asking a question, after crying there should be a question mark. What is the color of the sky? Here the sentence begins with a capital W, again a question, so there should be a question mark at the end of the sentence. The last one, oranges, mangoes, bananas and papayas are fruits. Here again, there are different fruits which are mentioned. So first of all, let's begin a sentence with a capital O. After every fruit, a comma is put. So after oranges, comma, mangoes, comma. And when the sentence ends after fruits, we put a full stop. So I hope children, you have been able to follow the meaning of the lines of this poem and deal with the various textual exercises. Thank you all for watching this video.